Jay Haynes with the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, I am going to shoot up my own car for free. So the two free applications that I will be using to create this effect are HitFilm Express from FX Home and Particle Illusion from Boris FX. Particle Illusion, you can download at their website. I will leave a link in the description below, and I will also leave a link in the description for HitFilm Express. So to start, I went out in my yard and got this video of my car. Uh, I shot it with my cell phone. It is just a little bit over six seconds long, and it is uh, 1920 by 1080 and is 30 frames per second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that footage in HintFilm and I'm going to drag it into the composite shot button and it will make a composite shot of that footage. Okay. And I want those um, bullet holes to basically appear right here on the car door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new plane by clicking new layer and plane. And I'm going to make the plane 100 pixels by 100 pixels, clicking OK. So now you can see that. And if I use my mouse wheel, I can scroll in here a little bit. What I want to do is I want to drag the corner of this plane a little bit just so that I have a, an idea of basically how much of an area it is going to cover that I want those bullets to cover. So this plane is only for reference, but if I now open up the properties and look under the transform folder, I can see that the scale is now about 453%, which means 453 pixels by 135. So let's call it 450 by 135. I'm going to go into Boris. Uh, FX Particle Illusion, and under the emitter search bar, I'm going to search for the word bullet. And should be able to find Super Bullet Holes, and I'm going to double click on that. And what that will do is that will bring it up over here. If, you, if I start playing it, you can see there it is, and it's just a point, right? Uh, in fact, if I play it here and I start dragging around, you can see how that is creating the bullet. And I could actually uh, create essentially the trail uh, all by hand animating, but instead what I'm going to do is open up the properties of the Super Bullet Holes preset and change shape from point to be an area. And you can see that there is a very, very tiny area, but if I grab one of those, then I can drag the area out. And we said about 550 by 130, I think, uh, something like that. So let's just go yeah, about like this, maybe a little bit. Actually, I'm not sure, I don't remember. Let's take a look here. Uh, oh, 450 by 135. Ah, 450. Good thing I checked, huh? 450 by about 135 or so. About like that. Okay. So now I am just going to sort of, man, maybe about that many bullets. Okay. Maybe that many bullet holes. From here, I want it to stop. So the number is 100. Okay. But if I click here, and I say make a linear keyframe, and it adds a keyframe there. If I then move forward one frame, and now I drag that to be zero, then it will stop right there. So now I have created this bullet riddling here that stops after that time, okay? All right, this actually is a duration of 300 frames, and but it's the same everything else, 1920 by 1080. Uh, 30 frames per second. 300 frames is um, or about 10 seconds worth, so that's that's plenty, right? So I think I can just go and render that. If I click the Render button, you can see it brings up the menu, and it gives me an opportunity to change this to whatever I want to call it. I think I will call it Bullets. Uh, and you can see it's a QuickTime ProRes 422, and it is RGB plus pre-multiplied alpha, which basically means it is transparent. And so then I hit the Start Render button, and it is going to render this out. Notice it is also forcing the motion blur for me. As soon as it's done, then I will bring this file into HitFilm Express. A few moments later. So now here I am in HitFilm Express. You can see that bullets has been moved into HitFilm Express, and there it is. It looks very good. 
And what I'm going to do is I don't need the plane anymore. So I'm just going to right click and say, remove that plane. And instead I'm going to drag the bullets in here and I think I'll back it up. Maybe I won't have it start right away, uh, but you can see that there they are. Okay. And what I want to do is just take that and I just want to slide it around a little bit. So that way I have it where I think it would look okay. That looks pretty good. What do you think? I think it probably does. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, now you can see that the bullets are not moving, the bullet holes, but the footage is moving because I shot this handheld. So I am going to need to do uh, some work to track this, but that's going to be pretty easy. First thing I will do is I will create a new uh, point layer, and that point will be the tracker. If I right-click and say rename, or I could use the F2 key, I'm going to just call this a track point. And under the car footage, if I twirl open the properties under tracks, if I click the little green plus, I create a new tracker. And notice that I've gone from the viewer tab to the layer tab. That's important to know. Uh, because there's a little bit of rotation, I'm going to actually make this a double point track. And if I use my mouse wheel to scroll in here, I can grab both of these and just place them on different ends of the car. And this should be pretty easy to track. Uh, I'm at the back, so I have to track backwards, um, but that's fine. It should track forwards, backwards, either direction. Shouldn't be a problem. Should be pretty quick and very, very solid in terms of the track. A few moments later... And we did have a very solid track there. Let me go ahead and scale to fit this. Uh, what I'm now going to do is go ahead and click on rotation. And then I will transform the track data to that track point and click apply. All right, now I'm going to go back into the viewer tab. And if I click on the track point, you can see that it is locked down to where it was before, but it's moving uh, just beautifully along with the footage. And so now if I take the bullets and I parent it to the track point by using this drop down menu, now watch as the bullets start hitting, they are tracked and locked into place on that car. So that is in a nutshell how that works. Now, what I wanted to do was kind of start here out and then zoom in a little bit on it kind of a thing. So here's how I did that. There's a, several ways that you could do that. The easy way that I sort of did was I just went back out to the media or the editor timeline and I brought my car footage on out here. I don't need the sound so I can use the alt key to just drag it onto the video. Uh, and then I start, oh, it's about here. Now I want to zoom in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go under controls, open up the transform properties, and you can see that if I click on this little display timeline, it will show me the timeline. I can actually uh, zoom in on that. You can see the space that this media clip takes up. I can go ahead and keyframe scale, and I can make it into a smooth keyframe, maybe move forward a few and uh, zoom in a little bit, right? Make that one into a smooth. So now you can see that it sort of zoom in like there, right? And now maybe I'll zoom back out. Oh, maybe I'll let it go a little bit longer. Yeah. And then I will maybe click highlighting the scale again, add another keyframe, can make it as, as and then maybe zoom this back out to, 100 again smooth and so now the whole thing when you play it looks like oh yeah well what are all those bullet holes and then shoom back out again so that's pretty much it in a nutshell if you uh like this video please do me a favor like the video and hit subscribe and also click the little bell icon for notifications share this video with your friends if you have any questions leave them in the comments below otherwise thanks for watching